I'm going to continue on with Mill now. And I think the first thing I want to do is to clear up the names consequentialism and utilitarianism. I didn't really do that in the last lecture, so I think the time has come. I said that consequentialism was the view that rightness of action is determined by goodness of things. That is, that uh, consequentialism is the view that one ought to maximize or promote or otherwise uh, respond to the good. And that's right, but that doesn't quite explain where the name comes from. And the basic idea is that uh, you think about the consequences of your actions, of, your, of the possible actions that are open to you when you're acting. I can do option A, I could do option B, I could do option C. Well, how do I make my choice? I think about the consequences of each of those decisions. Acting on option A, acting on option B, acting on option C. And I weigh those consequences in terms of the good that they produce. Okay. So that is, I, ju I choose my action based on that action's consequences. And in particular, the amount of good that that, that action produces. Okay. Now, utilitarianism, again, is just a species of consequentialism. It's a form of consequentialism. There are other forms, and I'll say a little bit more about that. Um, and it's a form of consequentialism because it says, well, not only is it true that one ought to act based on how to maximize the good, but also I've got a very particular story about what the good is. Okay. And if you're utilitarian, that particular story is that the highest good is human happiness. Now, there's no particular mystery about the name utilitarianism. Um, utility just happens to be Mill's word of choice for human happiness, pleasure, absence of pain. Okay. Um, Mill is very much aware that utility has other uses in the English language, and so he goes to some pains to distinguish his use and to make sure that the reader understands that when Mill uses the word utility, he doesn't mean expediency or effectiveness or usefulness or anything like that. He means human happiness. Okay. Um, so that's where those two names come from. Okay. Mill, of course, is both. He's a utilitarian, and all utilitarians are consequentialist, so he's also consequentialist. Now, I guess we left off last time with this hanging question about how we might go about trying to prove the principle of utility, that is, the idea that happiness is 